Welcome everyone to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event today. Uh, we have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Stephanie and I will be your facilitator for this session. Before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping announcements for you. <coughs> Excuse me, your camera and microphone are off so our panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please, please be sure to check out the full schedule online. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. I would now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Winona State University. All right, hello everyone. Let me get my screen up here. Okay. All right, hello everyone. My name is Renee Cortez and I am uh, the admissions representative uh, here today from Winona State University. Uh, and uh, for those of you that don't know about Winona State, we are located in the city of Winona in the southeastern portion of Minnesota. And we are a public four-year institution as part of the Minnesota State Universities and Colleges. So we'll just start off with uh, some quick numbers today. Uh, so Winona State University, uh, we have the number one student success rate in the whole Minnesota state system. So that includes about 37 or so uh, colleges both uh, four-year uh, schools as well as two-year schools. Uh, and we were also just this year, so it's pretty exciting, uh, we were rated the number one best public institution in the state of Minnesota. So really exciting things happening for us. Uh, our student faculty ratio is about 18 to one with our average class size at about 19. So you really do get that individualized attention and you won't be just a face in the back of the room. We have two different types of study abroad. So there's short term, faculty led usually over a break like winter or spring break. Uh, and then we also have the full semester uh, study abroad where you can go to multiple different cities across the world. Uh, and so really awesome opportunities there. Uh, we are looking to have our study abroad back up and going again this summer. Uh, so if you are a senior or a junior uh, or any other grade, it should be up and going by the time you would come here. We are divided up into five different colleges. Uh, and so we have all kinds of different programs that you can choose from. 94% of our first year students do get some sort of financial aid, whether that be grants, loans, or scholarships. And while we do not have a requirement for our students to live on campus, 94% of our first year students uh, do choose to live on campus anyway. And they have five different halls that they can choose from on our main campus. I would say our most popular majors are going to be nursing, elementary education, and business administration. Uh, so if these are anything that you're interested in, um, they are I mean, the ones that we have that um, have the most students interested in them, but we have other great programs as well. Uh, I've been looking at the purple squares. Uh, we're at about 7,000, a little under, a little over 7,000 students uh, right now, about 7,100, I believe. So we got that small campus feel, but we're also, um, we also have opportunities, especially in research, for our students that you may get only at a uh, larger school. We have over 80 majors and programs for students to choose from in those five different colleges. Uh, we do have 14 NCAA Division II sporting teams. Uh, so 13 Division II ones, and then there's one uh, Women's Gymnastic Division III uh, team. And then finally, we have over 150 student clubs and organizations that our students can choose from. Um, so lots of great, great ways to get involved outside of the classroom. So cost is a huge part of college. Uh, so up here on the screen, I do have uh, the tuition and fees, the technology program and the housing and meal plan. Uh, and so you'll see that in the first square up there. Uh, so for those of you that are residents of Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wisconsin, uh, you would be uh, classified as a resident. Uh, anyone in the other states would be a non-resident. Uh, and so those are two different uh, fees there you can see what they would total up to. 
and this is annually, um, so less than $20,000 a year, so it's pretty good. And of course, that is before financial aid kicks in. Uh, and then on the bottom square or rectangle uh, are the traditional room rates um, right now. Uh, and that is included in that uh, housing and meal plan, uh, one that you can see up above. So, you know, we got the traditional residence hall, you have the suite uh, residence hall, as well as the double and single. Uh, we have three different meal plans that you can choose from. And so those are labeled right there. When you do choose to live on campus, you are required to have a meal plan. So Winona State application is fairly simple. It's online, should only take you about 15 to 20 minutes to fill out. There is no essay. Uh, there is a $20 application fee. However, if you do apply during the month of October, which is right now uh, for my seniors, uh, you would get that fee waived automatically. Uh, we would just need your high school transcript sent into us. And so that's pretty much the main thing we would need. Uh, for my seniors, uh, we are test optional for our fall of 2022 admittance. We don't know um, if we're gonna be test optional for the juniors, uh, so stay tuned. Uh, automatic admission, pretty much if you have a 3.0 GPA or above, or you're in the top 50% of your class, you can pretty much guarantee being admitted. Uh, you'll be notified within two to three weeks or so. Uh, however, if you don't meet one of these criteria, I still always encourage you to apply because we do have a very thorough appeal process, which would include a personal statement and two letters of recommendation. Uh, and so you would work with me or whoever your admissions counselor is um, to get that submitted. And so that's just a little bit about Winona State. Um, like I said, we are a public institution. Uh, and so we are able to be pretty affordable. Uh, and honestly, you know, that's one of the main things I was looking at when I went to college is where could I go and get the most quality education for the cheapest price. Uh, and, you know, I didn't go to Winona State myself, but from what I've seen of all the teachers and faculty members, students, alumni, everyone is just so amazing and so awesome. And we have all kinds of alumni that have gone on to do great things. Uh, up here on the screen, I do have the contact information uh, for the various admission counselors uh, within the area. Uh, so if you are a greater Minnesota resident, you'd be working with Liz. Uh, if you are in the southeastern portion of the state, you'd be working with Brady. If you're outside of Minnesota, you'd be working with Alex. If you are within the seven county metro area of the Twin Cities, you'd be working with me, again, Renee Cortez. Uh, and then if you are a transfer student, you would work with our transfer team. Uh, but I say I want to uh, I want to say again, thank you for joining me today and learning a little bit about Winona State University. Hi everyone, I am Lexi, and I'm from Minot State University. Um, thanks for hopping on today. Um, stay tuned, you'll learn some fun things about us. Um, this is a little bit about Minot State. Um, if you guys are wondering where Minot State is located, I have a little graphic for you. Um, some people don't know, which is totally okay. So if you know where, oh, I clicked way too fast. Um, if you, oh, problem, so sorry. So if you know where Minnesota is at and South Dakota and Montana, we're located right in between. Um, we're right up. Uh, kind of in the middle, but located a little bit to the left. Um, some fun facts about Minot State, we offer over 100 plus areas of study. 90% um, of our grads are either employed or continue in education at Minot State. Um, we are um, rated one of the top um, universities for in-state tuition for our students. Um, most of our students are granted about $7,922 for um, financial aid and 89% of our students will receive grants scholars and scholarships. Um, if you kind of look in the corner, we have a little pie chart right there and it talks about how many students are in our huge majors of studies at Minot State. We have over a thousand students in education and health sciences, over 400 in business. I'm actually a College of Business alumni. I love College of Business here, it's great. Um, so I'm a little biased. If you ever want to talk about business here, you can let me know. Um, we have 800 students in arts and sciences, 200, over 200 in our grad program, and then 300 in other fields of study. Um, our student population, we have about 3,000 students here. Um, 
over 200 are online and then 300 on camp, I mean, 3,000 on campus. 65% um, of those students are North Dakota residents. Others are from Canada, international, and US areas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, a little bit about our residence halls. Um, we have two community style residence halls at Minot State, and that is Cook and McCullough. Um, those are your um, community style, so you only have one roommate, and then you'll share, um, in your room you share a desk and a chair and a closet. Um, your bathrooms are actually located outside of your dorm. Um, they have full necessities there. Um, community side bathrooms, like I mentioned prior, um, microwave access, laundry facilities, um, those are included in your student fees, so you don't have to bring quarters anymore like I did when I went to college, so that's really nice. Um, all of our residents have Wi-Fi. Um, our other two residence halls are Crane and Lura, and those are suite styled, so you have four roommates, and then you guys share a bathroom. Um, Lura is one of our funnest halls that we have on Minot State. Um, they have a living learning community there, so if you're in I would say an extrovert, I would say join, um, apply for a Lura Manor because they have a living learning community. So you get to do Pinterest night, movie night. Um, they're very engaging with the residents and always have something going on on campus. Um, if you look over to the side, we have our meal plans. Um, we have three um, basic meal plans. Um, our first one is the premium plan and that's 1950 a semester plus you get 150 dining dollars. Um, those dining dollars are loaded onto your student ID card and those are split up into the two semesters. So you get 75 in the fall and 75 in the spring. Um, and you can use that at our C store that we have upstairs. And then we even have a Starbucks that you can use those dining dollars at. So pretty fun stuff right there. Um, our base plan is 19 meals a week. And then we have a block plan for 160. Um, I tell our student athletes that this is probably the best meal plan to have because it's about 10 meals a week. Um, since you're always traveling and on the road, our meals don't um, go into the next week. So you either use them up or you lose them. So I tell our student athletes do that so you're not losing your meals. Um, and then those 350 dining dollars, those go again on your student card and are split up into the two semesters. Um, we offer a lot of financial aid and scholarships and awards at Minot State. Um, our, our annual cost is $8,164 for tuitions and fees. Our room and meals are $6,600 for a total of $14,764 for the year. Depending on what you're awarded and if you have a scholarship through sports or academics, that can be reduced. Um, the one thing I like is that we take everything, not one or the other. So if you are awarded more than one scholarship, we'll take both. My four years here, I had um, four scholarships and that really helped me out through my college career. Um, one um, award that I absolutely love is the Minot State Automatic Four-Year Award. Um, it's based on your ACT, SAT score, and then your GPA. Um, I'll use myself for example. I had an ACT score of 25 and a GP of 30, um, 3.6, sorry. So I was awarded um, that $1,000. So it split up into the two semesters. So I got 500 in the fall, 500 in the spring. And that just helped me out. Um, one thing I should mention is there are deadlines and then our scholarships do open up in December. So you're able to apply and once December comes around, and I say do that because deadlines always creep up on us. Other opportunities to apply for scholarships, we have links. And if you're thinking about a scholarship in your field of study, I can definitely send you um, a link later on if you're looking for that. And then federal financial aid opened up on October 1st. So I would say apply for that so you know what kind of um, financial aid you are getting. And then there is deadlines for that as well. Here's um, our little fun fact sheet about all of our majors we have at Minot State. Um, if you're looking at one, you can kind of peek and see. Um, feel free to reach out. Um, we have a lot of um, pre-professional tracks here at Minot State just to get you started. Um, a lot of undergrad certifications and then again, our undergrad programs. 
Um, like I mentioned before, we have a hundred areas of study. Hey, Lexi. And nine, yeah. <laughs> Am I getting to the point where I'm almost done? You, made, <laughs> you reached your six minutes. Oh, so if you sorry. have any extra information you want to put in the chat for our students, um, me, please I'm feel on... free to put it down there. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And we'll move on to our next institution. Hello, all. My name is Sam Kelly. I'm coming to you from North Hennepin Community College. This is my shameless prop, Ella, um, who is definitely going to cry during the middle of this. So I hope you're all okay with that. Um, can everybody see the presentation? Somebody yell at me if they can't. Um, cool. So North Hennepin Community College, um, we are a um, regional um, community college um, with a pretty strong um, international population um, who likes to come over to us to, to start their education, um, as well as uh, um, a lot of online classes. So students take those kind of all over the place once they start with us. Um, so as I start going here, <laughs> sorry. Um, so Minnesota State System, um, about a little under ten, a little under ten thousand students right now. A little over nine thousand, depending on uh, the time of year. Average class size of twenty one, and our average student is about twenty five years old, dealing with all kinds of things, working full time, family, and everything else. Um, Sixty percent of our classes are on campus. Um, Fifty percent as of fall two thousand twenty one. Um, so as things change and continue to be different um, throughout time here. Um, we will see what that at what happens, but we like to be on campus and when we're on campus, it's a vibrant community. Um, so 30 uh, programs or degrees and programs that we offer, uh, just a couple of them right here. Some of the big ones, liberal arts, students kind of getting all that stuff done before they transfer onto a four year institution. Uh, business is a transfer pathway. All the things with TP on them are transfer pathways designed specifically to move uh, to one of the other Minnesota State Schools, we build them so that everything transfers and you go right from this associate degree to a bachelor's degree. Computer science, law enforcement, also big transfer programs. Um, and then nursing is working with a Minnesota Nurses Association. Um, it's a five semester program that once again gets you the associate of nursing and then transfers right to another institution to continue that process and finish the rest of the program. Um, also a ton of certificates if anybody's kind of interested in um, just enhancing their education um, for jobs that they're in and wanting the next job up or the next rung up the ladder. Um, we've got partnerships at all of these institutions right now um, to offer bachelor's degrees on our campus. So students will come, they will start, for example, the biology program um, at um, North Hennepin, get that bachelor's degree, but then stay on campus and start taking classes from um, professors who are employed by Bemidji but teach at North Hennepin um, and they will be Bemidji students um, but keep going forward on on this path at North Hennepin. Um, so they've got all the all the things they need, all the labs, all the professors, all the access um, that they need to do that and get that degree with us here. Um, for students who need help, who need support with whatever they're doing, um, academic advising helps students kind of plan their next step. I always say that North Hennepin Community College is the beginning, not the end of an educational pathway, um, because really we're preparing students for the next step and our whole focus is on what are you doing next. Um, we've got access services, TRIO and the uh, care center helps keep our students healthy, helps getting them at resources, helps getting them jobs even while they're, they're with us. Um, just to make sure that everything can, can kind of work seamlessly. Uh, tutoring in the library um, are both, oh, excuse you all, are both fantastic resources. Um, and those folks work really hard to make sure that students kind of have all they need. Um, students with disabilities um, can really access a lot of the, the stuff from access services. Um, and then there's a health clinic on campus too, uh, just to do some of the basic stuff. I know. Um, clubs and organizations, especially once campus is kind of there and vital, um, there's a lot going on. Um, the fitness and rec centers are open now. Um, theater will be starting up next semester. Um, usually there are five performances going on all the time. Um, yes, I know, Bella. Um, the big thing everybody's always interested in is cost. Um, and we make this really easy. Um, this is per credit hour basis. So 
There are no extra fees. There are no extra little hidden things in there. It is $203.41 for an on-canvas or blended hybrid credit, um, period. Um, so you take kind of whatever you're taking as far as credit hours, multiply it by these numbers here, and that's what you're paying. Um, the only other extraneous thing is books. So you really can do an entire 30 credit hour full-time year for about $6,000. Um, that's that's what we we want students to be able to do. We think that's accessible for them, um, and um, we help them get there through um, through grants and loans and work study on campus. Students can access all of these, none of these, or any combination of them that you want. Um, so um, we really encourage students to do what they can to have get to get access to these. Um, we try to make it really easy for them to do. Um, so application process is pretty easy. Um, first, fill out that application. Um, yes, there's a $20 application fee, but uh, as someone already mentioned, the month of October is College Knowledge Month, so you can get that fee waived with a promo code just by contacting us and talking a little bit. Um, after that, you fill out FAFSA kind of at the same time in a concurring way, um, and, and that kicks in a whole lot of our processes. Um, at North Hennepin, we don't require um, transcripts from a lot of our students. Um, we don't require ACT or SAT testing. What we do ask is that you come in and take a placement test, and that tells us if you need some extra work before you get into the um, college level classes. Then there's orientation and registration with uh, an academic advisor. Um, Thanks so much for your time and let uh, me know if there are any questions that I can answer for you. I really appreciate you stopping and sharing with us. All right, well, hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Victoria and I am here from Concordia University, St. Paul. And if you guys don't know where we're located, we are located right in the twin city of St. Paul um, in between Minneapolis or we're right off of 94. So um, thank you again for joining us and uh, we'll get started a little bit about what Concordia has to offer. Um, so we'll kind of just start off with some history of who Concordia is and how we came about. Um, we are a Lutheran private institution and we are affiliated with the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate. Even though we do celebrate our Lutheran heritage, we do have a, a wide variety um, of diversity and culture behind that. So even if you're not Lutheran, that's perfectly okay. We have a lot of students that comes from different religion backgrounds. Um, as for our student population, we have a little over 1,700 of those traditional students, so that number is quite small. And so because of that, it gives us the opportunity to have really small class sizes. On average, you're looking at around 17 students in your classroom, which is really great because you get to build those personal connections with your professor. Um, and so with that, our student to faculty ratio is, of course, 18 to 1. So that really means that you get to know your professor and your professor gets to know you. And that also means that we don't have any teacher assistance. So we always encourage students to take advantage of that and to really build meaningful connections with them because our professors here really do care for our students and they really want our students to succeed. Um, of course, here are just some of our largest majors that we are known for, but of course we have a little over 70 uh, majors and a little over um, 40 minors. So a lot of varieties of majors that you can go in and um, continue your degree in. A little bit about just our campus life and how you can be involved on campus. There's a lot of different types of clubs and organizations here on campus. We have um, academic clubs such as math club, science club, but then we also have student diversity clubs. So examples of that would be our um, Somalian club. We have a black student union club. We even have an anime club. So there's so many different varieties of clubs that you can participate in. And what's really amazing about Concordia is that even if there's a club that we don't have, you're more than welcome to actually make a club yourself. And so we really encourage students to take the steps to build those clubs and take initiative to do that. Um, and one really great thing about Concordia is that we also have a pretty big fine art program here. So if you're really into theater, dance, or music, you're more than welcome to participate in that. We also do have scholarship for students who wanted to participate in it, but doesn't necessarily want to major or minor in it. 
Um, and then again, we are a D2 athletic school here that competes in the NCAA. And so if you are coming here for an athlete, we do have scholarships for you. Otherwise, we also do have um, a eSport. So if you are a competitive gamer and you want to game and you want to kind of do that here at Concordia, you have the opportunity to do that. And if you just love watching games, but you don't want to compete in it, that's perfectly okay. Um, all of our students are more than welcome to um, come to our games for free. And then we also do have a intramural sport as well that our students are also more than welcome to participate in. So a little bit about just our application process and how that looks like. The first thing is that you can absolutely apply through our website or through the Common App, whichever one is more convenient for you. Um, and then our application is free. So there's no need for you to pay for the application. We would like to see an essay. So if you're doing it the Common App, feel free to use their prompt. But if you're doing it through our website, we have a few prompts for you to choose from. Feel free to read through it and then write your essay on whichever one kind of um, interests you more. Uh, we do want to see a transcript, but this can be unofficial. And so if you want to, feel free to send in the unofficial first. And then once you graduate, we'll ask for your official transcript. We are a test optional school, so that just means that if you want to send in your ACT scores, you are more than welcome to send them in. But if you don't want to, that's perfectly okay. We're not going to base any scholarship uh, but off of your ACT scores. And a little bit about just our pricing and how much we cost. So of course, we are a private institution, so we are going to be a little bit more expensive compared to a public school, but we are by far the most affordable private institution here in the Twin City. And that's something that we really hold true to our heart and that we really value because we really want to make sure that we give you the best education with the best price. Um, so this is more of our set price. Um, for our tuition is looking at 23. We only have one set of price for our room and board, which is around 9,000. And so with everything, you're looking at around 33,000. Again, that is just a sticker price. We're not even including your FAFSA or, or the scholarships that you could be eligible for. So here is just some scholarships that we do offer for our students. Academic scholarship basically means that that is off of your, that's based off of your unweighted GPA. So whatever unweighted GPA you had on your transcript, this is how we're gonna be able to award you. And then the rest following that is gonna be based off of your application. So based off of how you answer certain questions on the application, this is how we're gonna award you. And what's really great about our scholarship is that they are all stackable. So you can potentially get up to 11,000 or 12,000, depending on where you land with these opportunities. And so lastly, I just wanna say, if you haven't had the chance yet, please make sure to come and schedule a visit to see us, to get a better view of what it looks like here on campus, but also please make sure to apply to us as well. We are a rolling admission, so that just means that we're always accepting students up until the last second. And again, just thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you guys come visit Concordia. All right, so good evening, everybody. My name is Colin McDonald. I am the admissions counselor for the state of Minnesota, representing the University of Tampa. Feel free to take a screenshot of any slide you see on my presentation today, including my contact information, and also feel free to check out our website of www.ut.edu. So getting right into it, we do have one of the best college campuses in the entire country, both in its scenic beauty as well as its safety and security. We were voted the safest college campus in the entire state of Florida, as well as in the top 20 in the entire country. We also have 20 NCAA Division II sports and actually a Division I girls beach volleyball team on our campus as well. And as you can see from this visual, we are right across the Hillsborough River from downtown Tampa, a short two minute walk across the Kennedy Boulevard Bridge into one of the biggest and best cities in the entire country. We just broke the 10,000 student threshold this year with about 9,000 undergraduate students and about 1,200 graduate students total. Our average class size is 22 with a faculty to student ratio of one to 17. So it's a very personalized educational experience and we are a medium-sized private university. And again, going over the statistics, as you can see here, we have a lot of 
hands-on learning opportunities as well. And part of the reason being 90% of our faculty members have obtained the highest degree in their respective field of study. And what this allows our students to have the advantage of is getting the top tier quality professors that are also dedicated directly to you. You are their first primary priority. And we have a lot of different programs that offer research at the undergraduate level. So you don't even have to obtain a degree to start taking advantage of these opportunities. We have our own marine science station for any of you guys who may be interested in a marine biology program. Again, with research available with four different vessels. And last year, our students were swabbing the inside of sharks mouths to see if that bacteria could help victims of shark bite during the healing process, which is pretty cool. And we also have internships within walking distance. And we are by far the closest university to downtown Tampa. So a lot of employers look to us both for the quality and the proximity of our student body. We also have a top tier nursing program and pre-med track, which you would apply into the fall of your sophomore year, as well as a pitch room that was inspired by the show Shark Tank. And we actually had a freshman student last year appear on that very show, and she did land a deal. And you can certainly check that out on our website as well. And we even have a financial trading center for our finance majors who are given a grant to then invest in the real life stock market. So our tagline is love where you live and learn, which really encompasses all of what it means to be a University of Tampa Spartan and a member of the Tampa Bay community. We offer over 300 different clubs and organizations, which include our Greek life sectors, our religious organizations, intramural sports, our volunteer center, and even a hammock club if that is a more leisurely way to start getting your connections on campus. But we also have state-of-the-art residence halls, as well as a terrific dining and meal option plans. So we really have the best of both worlds, both being in a major city, but also having our own campus feel and having students from all 50 states, as well as over 130 countries from around the world. So right here is a list of our application deadline periods. Our early action one is going to end on November 15th. And if you do apply before that deadline, you'll find out your decision within a month of applying and you'll most likely not be placed on our wait list. Another excellent opportunity to apply to UT is the fact that we do not have any binding decisions. So if you do get admitted to UT, you can submit your enrollment deposit, look at your other options. And if you do decide to go a different direction, that deposit is still 100% fully refundable up until May 1st. In the application process itself, what we'll need you guys to do is select from one of three applications, either the Common App, the University of Tampa App, or the Coalition for College App. And from there, you'll have your guidance counselor send in your official high school transcripts. You'll write a personal essay. There's no prompt required. You can write about whatever you would like. And we do need at least two letters of recommendation from non-family members. So make sure you keep all those components in mind. And once again, it's been a pleasure speaking with all of you. Feel free to ask me any questions at any time. I'm more than happy to be an asset for anybody who's interested in the University of Tampa. Go Spartans. Hi everyone, let me get my screen shared. So bear with me one moment. All right, perfect. Hi, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Alex Goldman and I am an admissions counselor here at the University of San Diego. So I'll go ahead and be chatting a little bit about who we are as an institution. Starting with our Catholic identity, we are a contemporary Catholic institution located here in the city of San Diego, founded in 1949 by the Sisters of the Sacred Heart in the Diocese of San Diego. Because of this unique co-founding between the two organizations, we're not actually governed by any religious order, such as the Franciscans or the Jesuits, but instead are guided by our uh, mission and values, specifically Catholic intellectual tradition meaning we believe in educating the whole individual, mind, body, spirit, socially, emotional health as well, and Catholic social teaching that everyone should be welcomed with open arms, regardless of their experience, their background, or their identity. Really valuing uh, human dignity in every individual. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a quote from Mother Rosalie Clifton Hill, one of our co-founders. She believed that there were three pieces essential to higher education, beauty, truth, and goodness. She said, if we built a beautiful place, people would want to come here and they'd be inspired by the environment. Once they were here, they'd find the truth 
and goodness in our community, and they'd be inspired to shape, uh, sorry, to seek the truth, and then they'd share that beauty, truth, and goodness with the world. So definitely a beautiful uh, motto that we have and it guides us today. We are consistently ranked as one of the most beautiful campuses in the nation with about 5,500 undergraduate students on our campus. Total population is about 7,000 when we count our graduate students. And about half of our students come from beyond California, representing 47 different home states, about 50, um, 50 different countries represent our 7% international population. About 41% of our students identify as students of color. And lastly, about 40% of our students identify as Catholic. That's probably one of the most popular questions that I get. Do I have to be Catholic to attend USD? And the answer is absolutely not. We want that diversity of faith, diversity of experience, uh, diversity of upbringing, because it's that diversity that allows our students to really engage and learn from one another. It also lends itself well to the classroom setting. We are liberal arts at our core, meaning we find that it's really important that you have a strong foundation in a variety of areas. areas. So you're gonna take math, science, English, literature, language, uh, theology, ethics, and really dive across, well, you have a little sampling of everything and you'll dive deep into your major of choice. Our core curriculum does span over the four years. So you will still have the opportunity to dive into those majors that you're interested in, in that first year. One of the cornerstones of the USD academic experience is a small class size, average class size is 21 students, largest class size 46. So really valuing that um, classroom engagement with your professors and your peers. 97% uh, of our faculty have PhDs or terminal degrees in their field. So we really want you to be able to learn from their experience and benefit from their mentorship. We do have an honors program and we value research and internships as well. Um, student life, plenty to do and become involved with here at USD. We have over 180 clubs and organizations. We're division one in our varsity athletics with 17 varsity sports. If any of you are athletes thinking about continuing that career, be sure to connect to coaches to see what they're looking for in their rosters. We also have club and intramural options as well for students who want to stay active, continue in the sport they love, but maybe not at Division one level. Um, last thing about intramurals, I always love to mention we do have fun intramural sports as well, kind of veering from the traditional offerings, including a Quidditch team, our Quidditch games, and then also um, we offer inner tube water polo. So water polo without treading water, what more could you ask for? We also have sorority and fraternity life on our campus. Um, currently about 27% of our students do participate. We don't offer a fall recruitment. So you do have time to kind of find your footing and find your place here at USD before adding recruitment to your plate. We are a change maker campus. This is a big part of who we are and what we value. Um, it's in its simplest form, making the world a better place. So all of our students are passionate about having a positive impact in the world around them. Uh, consistently, this is a commitment to social justice, social innovation, sustainability and global perspective. Um, so this is something we look for in the application process. I encourage you to really highlight everything you do when you're not in class so that we can really understand the full picture of what you're interested in, what you're looking for. Um, lastly, this is a great time to talk about study abroad. We have about 80% of our students studying abroad at least once in their time at USC. If you love immersing yourself in another culture and gaining those types of um, boots on the ground experiences, then study abroad will be a really great option for you. We do have a couple of uh, keynote programs here at USD, including our Madrid Center for students who love the USD experience and want to study at our satellite campus in downtown Spain, or um, our double degree, double degree programs with our business school. Application details our Common App School, so definitely submit that common application. We do have member questions in which we're really trying to understand why USD and why you want to become a Torero. We do look at all four years of your high school transcripts. We require one letter of recommendation, but can accept up to three. We do have English proficiency minimums for our international students and an application fee of $55. The application deadline is December 15th, the one and only deadline to apply, and we are a test-free institution, commonly known as test blind, so no need to send standardized test scores. Feel free to connect with us. This is Toro Ambassador Network if you want to connect directly with our students. And I'll drop contact info in the chat. So thank you. Stop sharing.
Wonderful. That was awesome, everyone. Thank you so much for sharing all that information about your institutions. It looks like we have about five minutes left. So um, if everyone could turn their cameras back on, um, we are going to do maybe one, maybe two, we'll see rounds, just a couple little quick Q&As um, to share some additional information with our students. So we'll go in the same order that everyone presented in. So Renee will start us off first and we will go down the list. Um, so if our presenters could answer this question, what is one piece of advice you would give to someone going through the college search process? So I would say it's really important um, to know the information. So as a first generation student, when I was going through the college process in the very beginning, there was a lot of things that I didn't know, but I also didn't know what questions to ask. So, you know, if you find a school that you really like, uh, hook up with the admissions counselor, sorry, I lost my words there, um, or an advisor or someone there, or with your high school counselor as well. Uh, and, you know, really just chat with them and get that information. Uh, let them get to know who you are and who you are as a person. And I think that would really help uh, in the long run. Um, I kind of just want to add to that a little bit. I would say, again, know your information. Um, one thing I stress is get a campus tour. Um, that way you know what the campus is like. Um, you can go in the buildings and get familiar right away. And then I always suggest to students, um, have a meeting with your program contact, even if you're undecided. Um, we have a program contact for the undeclared major, but it's always nice to get that extra information about what you're going into for your next four years. I think the one thing I keep going back to with students is don't be nervous to talk to folks, whether it's at commute or at college fairs or anything else. Um, it's a whole lot of people that just want you to succeed and want to be part of that success. So don't be afraid of just asking any questions. And yes, she would say that too. Yeah, I was just going to say, visit as many colleges as you can possible. Um, that's just a really great way to know where you fit and maybe where you don't fit. But also ask as many questions as you can. I promise you there is no such thing as a dumb question. So but ask anything. And, the, and that's why we're here. We are here to answer all of your questions. Certainly a very thorough process, and it's going to be a big investment for the next chapter of your life and quite frankly it's not an easy decision to make so don't make it alone you're going to have your family to help you out we're all here to help you out and also make sure that you utilize the other resources that all of us have to offer not just being an admissions counselor but financial aid if you have any military benefits if you have any academic specific questions feel free to ask 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 until you are satisfied with the search and then you make a decision on may 1st and then you have an exciting road ahead of you my advice would be to enjoy it. I think sometimes we can get bogged down with the deadlines and the details of everything, um, but take a moment, take a deep breath. This is an exciting opportunity and an exciting new chapter. Um, so definitely try to enjoy it a little bit as well. All right, wonderful. And let me share my screen real quick. Perfect. Um, students and families, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Um, when you close this window, just one little thing for you, there will be a very, very quick, I promise, um, five question survey, and we would greatly appreciate any feedback that you are willing to provide for us. Um, remember, we do encourage you to check back um, for any other additional sessions. And um, you will be able to find this session's recording along with any other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. Thank you so much for attending all of our presenters, all of our wonderful institutions. Thank you to everyone as well. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful evening um, and best of luck to everyone throughout their college search process. Bye.